So you know what's Toro Vlog? Never heard of it. No? Uh, Pretty yeah, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you can do the, like on puns, but it's yeah. oh. safe and happy. Yeah. Welcome to a Star Vlog. This is our fancy, fancy stand. You can see it, it's bigger than the, the uh, year before. Um, Hola, chamas y chamos. Welcome back to Alvaro Dev Labs. Like two weeks ago, I had the chance to be with the study vlog crew at BGS Amsterdam and I spent time in the booth hanging around with the community, playing Tetris and doing fun stuff. So today I decided to do things a little bit different. It's not a tutorial video. It's about the 10 most asked questions that we receive on the study vlog booth. Thanks to my friends on Middleware Productions, Tim Bankins and Mark Bakes for the amazing footage of the BGS Amsterdam that they decided to let me for this video. Thank you very much. If you want to check more things about BGS Amsterdam and events in the community, make sure you follow them. This video is sponsored by StoryBlog. So the first question that we receive a lot is, is a StoryBlog open source? While the core product, the dashboard and the interface that you see as a software as a service is not open source, it's in a private uh, repository, a story will count with a wide selection of open source SDKs from React, Svelte, Astro, Laravel, Vue to anything that you can imagine. You can check them out in GitHub a Study Block and contribute to them. Uh, open your issues then and we are more than happy to um, merge the features that you might present. Next questions. Do I have to pay to get started with? That's the amazing part. You don't. You can go to studyblog.com, create a free account and start a trial for several days and then choose a plan that goes better for you. I normally choose the community plan for my side projects because it's completely free and it has a really generous capabilities. This one is pretty funny to be honest. Is Studyblog just a fancier WordPress? So um, WordPress is a traditional CMS, uh, it has been launched long ago and it has a lot of users, especially a big community behind. But it's basically like a, a solution to create templates and themes for the pages. It's more like a traditional CMS. StoryBlock, in the other hand, is a headless CMS solution that try to provide a modern approach where you are completely framework agnostic in your frontend and you can consume the content via an API. I started my career using WordPress and I remember creating these templates in PHP and you were constrained to a certain technology to do it. Meanwhile, in the start of log, you can choose React, Next, Linux, Vue, Svelte, Astro, whatever you want in the front end because it's completely decoupled. So in the spot number seven, we have one question that was really common, especially from people outside of the Vue.js community, is that is StoryBlog a Vue.js only framework? To start with, StoryBlog is not a framework, it's a headless CMS. So even if the core uses Vue.js, it doesn't matter to you because you are gonna choose whatever technology you want in front. You can use React, Next, Svelte, you can use Astro, you can use Laravel, it depends on you. So this gives a lot of flexibility to the developers to choose the technology that they want to use. Of course, if you're creating plugins, for example, or something more specific to the core product, maybe you are, for now, constrained to use Vue. But what really matters is if you front end is completely framework agnostic. So in position number six, we have the following one, but can I also style it differently? So depends what you want to style. If it's your website, you are the complete owner of the styles of your website because it's completely headless. So you can style it with the fonts, the color that you want because the front end is completely detached from the product of the store. If you want to customize the color of the dashboard itself, the story blog uh, product, I have to say that it's not possible because it's not what it's meant for. Although you can, in the visual editor, have some fields to customize the values that your page is gonna receive and you can change, for example, uh, the amount of margin between two sections or even uh, the color of the toolbar. That's up to you. 
In position number five, we have, can I drag and drop to move components on the visual editor like page builders? So you can drag and drop blocks in the sidebar to change the order of the components appearing in your page. What you cannot do is drag and drop from the sidebar into the visual editor because it's not what it's meant for. It's actually a visual feedback rather than a page builder like Wix, for example, that you can drag and drop stuff and then edit them online in line. So I started to focus more in the value of changing the content and having the visual feedback rather than complicating things more for the content editors. <laughs> the following one is really funny. Like, are you hiring? Um, of course we are. Uh, maybe not as intensive as years uh, before, but there are a few positions open. Uh, I will put in the description below. Uh, you can uh, see the open positions in the link in the starterblog.com. And if the role that you're looking for is not open yet, you can still join the talent pool and the other link that I'm going to put in the description. In number three, we have, do you have a GraphQL API? So besides the fact that most of the APIs that the StoryBlock provides are REST APIs, there is indeed one uh, GraphQL content delivery API. I'm going to put the link in the description below for the tutorial on how to use it, which offer a number of advantages like automated documentation and strongly typed responses. So this uh, this API is a read-only endpoint and is optimized for fast content delivery. You cannot update things with it. So for number two, we have, can you self-host a starter block independently? So while you are responsible completely for your front end, that means that you uh, need to provide the hosting and where you put all your things. It could be, for example, if you're doing a static website, you can put it in Amazon uh, S3 buckets or whatever, or Bersel and uh, Netlify. Uh, a starter block is a software as a service, meaning that it can be used to integrate different platforms and channels, but you don't need to worry about the server, databases, or any of that stuff. That means that it's hosted by a study block. I hope that answers the question because a lot of people ask this one, especially for more professional matters, like in their companies and so on. Um, so I hope that clears things. So we arrived to the position number one. So drop the drum rolls, please. And we have, is the story blog the same as the storybook? So this is probably one of the most asked questions and the funniest one, because even if we share the same, uh, almost the same logo, the complete uh, name, we only changed one letter. We both shared like a big passion for the community, but we are not the same, okay? So a storybook is actually an application that allows you to create isolated components and test them like a design system or whatever you're doing, like components for your applications that you have a system that is really complicated to uh, debug or deploy, then you can do it there, right? A story block is a headless CMS solution. So it's completely different. Although uh, we're actually partners and we use a story book inside, uh, no joking, for the design system. Uh, you can see it in the description below. I post a link uh, for our design system and you can see that it's actually made with a, a storybook. So yeah, um, we are not the same, but, but we are cool friends. So these were the most asked questions that we received on the story blog booth. I hope you enjoyed this video. They, it was helpful to clear some of the questions that you might have about the story blog. If you have any more questions, please drop them in, in the description below and we'll be more than happy to answer them. So as always, make sure you subscribe, you drop a like to this video and see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.